Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at a video from a channel called Real Life Catholic, simply titled God is Real. That seems rather unequivocal, so of course I'm expecting nothing but the best in this one. Let's go! You know, we can know there's a God just by thinking about it. God. Literally the only person in all of existence who wants you to figure out that he exists by thinking about him rather than going through all the trouble of just introducing himself. Okay, wait, that might not be entirely accurate. When out in public I tend to be quite introverted, so the idea of introducing myself to people I don't know is undesirable to say the least. But the flip side here is that I don't actually care whether or not those people know that I exist. God supposedly wants everyone to know that he exists, and will actually torture people for not thinking he exists. So maybe God's an introvert and that's why he doesn't want to pop in and say hi, but the torture that you get for not saying hi to him first seems somewhat unreasonable, does it not? Edwin Conklin, one of Einstein's associates, he said, the probability of life originating from an accident is comparable to the probability of an unabridged dictionary resulting from an explosion in a print shop. Think about that for a second. Couple things here. First, I can't find anything saying that Conklin was an associate of Albert Einstein. They lived at the same time, sure, but that doesn't automatically make them associates. Now, I didn't exactly do an exhaustive search, so maybe they did work together on something at some point, but whatever it was, it would have been so minor as to not warrant even a brief mention in either of their Wikipedia pages, or any of the brief biographies that I scanned through written for organizations like The Embryo Project. My point in bringing this up is that this shows within the first 30 seconds of the video that this guy is willing to bend the truth or even outright lie in order to lend himself the appearance of credibility. Most people have probably never heard of Conklin, so a quote from him doesn't pack much of a punch all on its own. So who else lived at the same time that was very famous for his scientific work? Einstein. They lived at the same time and in the same country for at least some of that time, so let's call them associates. Now, second, Conklin was very religious. He was raised religious, and he considered a career in theology before he later landed on biology, so it's not like he learned about biology and that's what convinced him of the existence of God. He went into biology class looking for vindication for his belief in God. Third, he died the year before the structure of DNA was first described, so obviously he drew this conclusion before we had a lot of key information about how life even works in the first place, which is enough to call this conclusion into question even if it were valid at the time, which it was not. This is just another and possibly earlier version of the tornado through a junkyard building a plane argument. It completely misses the fact that biology relies on reproduction with modification, something that doesn't happen with inanimate objects that explode or are hit by tornadoes. Now, if we had some sort of scenario set up where this print shop would explode over and over again, and any letters that landed in the correct positions were kept to the side with each explosion adding a few more in the right spots, then eventually you will get whatever book is the predetermined goal, but this analogy still doesn't work because all the evidence points to there being no goals with evolution, it's just whatever happens to work. So it would be more like keeping words that fit in any literary work that has ever been or ever will be produced by humanity in their entire history. So yeah, there are some combinations of letters and words that will be excluded because of the various rules of grammar and whatnot, but it now becomes far more likely that we will not only get one book by the end of our process, but many, many books in several different styles and in several different languages. And it's still a flawed analogy, because even with all of humanity's literature and potential literature to pull from, you're starting with an end goal in mind, which evolution does not. Print shop explodes. Paper, ink, bonnies flying through the air. Hey, look! A dictionary! Yeah, no, that's not how it would work. And that's not how anyone thinks it would work. Worth pointing out at this point is that, since this is a Catholic organization, this dude probably does accept evolution, he just believes that God guided it. That was certainly Conklin's position on the matter. So he's not necessarily using this argument to say that evolution is impossible, therefore evolution is false, therefore God did it. He's using it to say that evolution is impossible, therefore God must have guided it. It's still an argument from ignorance at best, but it's a bit more subtle and open to scientific data than the typical creationist tripe. <laughs> I don't think so. 
On a molecular level, your fingernail is more complex than a library full of dictionaries. Okay, but how is the degree of complexity even relevant here? Like, fingernails don't need to be complex. They perform a pretty simple job when you think about it. It just needs to be a bit of hard protein that protects the tips of our fingers. That's way simpler than a library, which needs to have a building, infrastructure supporting that building, staff, books, not just the books, but also a catalog of which books they have that's updated in real time to reflect the ones that are currently available versus which ones have been checked out. And this is just scratching the surface of what's required to get a library working. So the fact that God designed something that is more complex than a library to do a job that is significantly simpler than what a library does says that, at the very least, God's not very good at designing things. But also, complex interactions arise spontaneously in certain circumstances. My favorite example is when researchers started a line of two different self-replicating RNA molecules, and over time, these two lineages evolved into at least five distinct lineages and formed a complex network of interactions including host-parasite relationships and eventually evolved into symbiotic relationships. The only thing the researchers did was make sure that the RNA had enough raw material to go about their replication, and then sat back and see what happens. And what happens is that complexity develops on its own with no need for outside guidance or influence. Atheism? It's kind of like a flea that doesn't believe in the dog. Well, the flea can literally bite the dog. Can I bite God? I don't see a dog. Well, maybe that's because you're <laughs> a flea. But in your worldview, God designed us. Even if he did it through evolution, he still designed us. Why would he not design us in a way that would be capable of perceiving him? That seems like it would be a good idea if he wants us to actually believe in him. This isn't really all that complex. No, it isn't all that complex. And yet, when I ask these fairly simple questions, I'm met with answers along the lines of either complex, mind-warping, apologetic arguments that go through all sorts of convoluted twists and turns to get you to a god, hopefully without noticing all the steps that were skipped along the way, or to God's mysterious ways. We don't know why he didn't make us capable of understanding everything we need to about him. We just have to trust that he's real and had some reason or other for doing that. Or else I get the how dare you expect God to stoop to your level just to prove himself to you. Which I find really weird because up until that point, it's usually all about how much God loves me and wants a relationship with me. Seems like if he wants a relationship, it's not really stooping down to just pop in and say hi. Every material thing has a beginning, a starting point, a cause. Do they, though? As far as we can tell, every material thing is made up of material that already existed but is just being reformed in one way or another. Can a reforming of existing material into a new configuration truly be called a beginning? Now, where did all this existing material ultimately come from? We don't know. There are several models that can potentially explain it, but at this time in history, our scientific knowledge is at a point where the answer is, we don't know. It's possible that this material did not have a beginning as we understand it, and so doesn't need a cause in the sense that we usually think, and so this statement then becomes meaningless. Maybe it is true that things that begin to exist have to have a cause, but we don't know that things actually began to exist in the sense that's required by this argument. And even if we did, we don't actually have any experience with anything truly beginning to exist in the sense of this argument, so we cannot draw conclusions about what is required to cause something to begin to exist. The universe is a material thing. So the universe must have a cause that's capable of starting universe. I mean, I guess I could agree that the universe must have a cause that's capable of starting the universe, if it could be said to have started in the first place. But I'm sure any channel regulars will already be familiar with what I'm about to say at this point. But just to reiterate, there are dozens of different cosmological models, some of which have what you might call a beginning, many of which do not and have a universe that is effectively infinite. So at the end of the day, if the universe had a beginning, then yeah, probably there was a cause sufficient for that beginning. But we don't know if it actually had that sort of a beginning, and saying there had to be a cause is very different from saying that cause had to be God. And that is very different from saying that God has to be the God of the Bible. 
but not just any god of the Bible, the god that the Catholic Church got out of the Bible. Because I think you'll find if you go to different denominations of Christianity and ask them about their god, they all have different gods that they all get from the Bible in different ways. Boom, there's a god. No. Boom, there's a cause. You have done nothing to show why that cause must be God, and even just granting the cause is a stretch. Physicists agree that 13.7 billion years ago, there was something called the Big Bang. And that sentence marks both the beginning and the end of the scientifically accurate portion of the video. And we used to think that ever since the Big Bang, the universe was expanding through space and time. We know better now. We know the universe is not expanding through space and time. Check this out, this is crazy. Because the universe contains space and time. I'm not entirely sure if that's an accurate picture of how our picture of the universe evolved over the last couple centuries. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Einstein figured out that space and time are intricately linked way back in the early 1900s, when cosmology was just a cute little baby science that was still figuring out how to crawl. I mean, that could be an accurate representation of one person's journey through learning about the Big Bang. You think that it's an explosion, just like the young Earth creationists claim it is, and so are surprised when you learn that the Big Bang was not an explosion in space, but rather an expansion of space. But that's not an accurate depiction of the scientific thought on the matter. Not as far as I can tell at any rate. Which means outside of the bubble of this universe is literally nothing. Not even space, not even time. Well, we don't even know if outside the bubble of our universe is a coherent statement. But that's also not necessarily the case. If there is a larger cosmos that contains multiple universes, then there are other universes out there with their own properties which might or might not be different from ours. My main point here is that this guy is being incredibly confident about something that the experts in the field that specialize in what he's talking about all agree that there is no way for us to be confident about it. So when the layperson says, oh no, obviously this is the case, when all the experts are saying, we actually don't have enough evidence to draw any firm conclusions about it at this time, then the layperson is full of shit. At best, this guy is completely ignorant. And that's the charitable interpretation. He could also just be lying. I can believe that. I can believe that 13.7 billion years ago, space and time and all this exploded into literally nothing. Do you want me to believe that a Big Bang could Big Bang itself? No, I mostly just want you to stop talking about aspects of science about which you are obviously clueless. Like, the Big Bang had the entire universe compressed into a tiny dot at one point. We haven't yet worked out a model of physics that can adequately describe what was going on then. And when I say we, I do not mean me. I mean the actual smart theoretical physicist peeps. I ain't working out shit. And so I won't pretend to know more than the people who actually are. And 13.7 billion years later, rational creatures are walking around drinking cappuccinos? Yeah, well, rational might be a bit much, and you definitely skip just a couple minor steps there, like the origin of life and evolution and all that. Like, ugh, you skip so much. But yeah, essentially. Cappuccino just kind of happened all by itself. <laughs> no, we made the cappuccinos. The real question is, why did God make coffee beans taste like shit so that we had to do a bunch of processing first before the sweet, sweet caffeinated nectar would actually be drinkable? I don't think so. Listen, I don't, I don't know why there's a God instead of nothing. And that same answer applies for the universe. You don't know why there's a God. He just is. It's the one beginning brute fact. I don't see a reason to go back that far. Why is there a universe instead of nothing? I don't know. There just is. It might just be a brute fact. But I know this. If I look at a painting on a wall, I can assume there is a painter. If I hold a book in my hand, you know, even if I can't see the author, I can assume there is one. And if I look at this universe, I can see that there is a universe-er. See how silly that sounds when you don't phrase it as creation and creator? Perhaps it's because with these things that we know come from intelligent beings, it's because we have previous experience with them that tells us that they come from intelligent beings, not because of some inherent property that they have that makes it impossible for them to not have come from intelligent beings. As far as the universe is concerned, we don't have enough experience with universes to be able to say with any amount of confidence where they come from or why they exist. And yet, apologists will take this unknown and claim that it is completely unknowable, therefore it must be God. More than that, it must be their specific version of God. And 
that's the end of the video. Nice and short today. He actually finished that sentence not with creator, but just by saying God. So he didn't even rise to the level of creation needs a creator. Today's comment of the day comes to us from Jacob Astapowitz, who says, Why no? You have to choose between an eternal universe and one that began. Your model of the universe is incomplete, so how can you critique other working models properly? Well, Jacob, the thing about that is, I don't have a model for the early universe. When I waffle between different models, some of which have a beginning and others that do not, that's not me having a model of the universe that both begins and does not begin. That is me saying that nobody knows for sure whether the universe had a beginning or not, and that comes from the fact that the experts in theoretical physics and cosmology cannot come to a consensus on the matter, because we don't have enough information at this time. So, yes, I can criticize apologists who say, Science tells us the universe had a beginning, therefore it must have been made by God. Because science tells us no such thing. They just latch on to one part of one cosmological model that they think leads to their preferred conclusion, and completely ignore all the rest. You don't need to have a cosmological model completely worked out in order to say, hey, no, you're pretending that a specific model has been conclusively demonstrated when it hasn't. Thanks for watching, thanks to Tim Robertson for being my Patreon manager, and special thanks as always to my patrons, who are the fleas that bite the dog that is my channel. If you'd like to bite God, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vicerhino, or by supporting the channel in one of the other methods that can be found at links.vicerhino.com, which is where you'll find links to my other projects. If for whatever reason you want to send me stuff, my P.O. Box address is in the description. And subscribe to The Watering Hole. See you next time!